Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is time for another 4 on Friday collaboration with my friend Danny. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to create with today, and then find out how you can go see what Danny has created. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Last month, my friend Danny and I started back up our Four on Friday collaboration series. This is something we started last year where we would both use the same product, technique, or idea and create four new projects using it. Well, we kind of fizzled out on that, but we wanted to bring it back and we've made a little change. We used to always use the same basic idea for our four projects, and now we can use whatever we want as long as we create four new pieces. So for instance, today I'm going to be using this die and Danny might be using a stamp set or a technique. If you want to see more videos in this series, I will link the playlist in the description box below and at the end of this video as an end card. In each of those, you'll see my projects and then I'll have a link to Danny's in the description boxes. For my four projects today, I'm going to be using something that a fellow crafty friend sent me in my P.O. box last month. If you saw my end of the month show us your sheet load slash happy mail feature, you will have already seen Danine's card and this cover die. When I first saw this die, not only was I completely grateful to Danine, but I also had a lot of ideas running through my head of how I could use this. So I thought it would be perfect for today's video. Here in just a minute, I'm going to get started on the process of four cards using this die as well as some other products. As I go along showing you how I created each one, I will let you know about other products and tools I bring in. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before I get to the process, I do have a special channel member shout out. I had two new paper trimmer level channel members join me this week, so I would like to say a great big thank you and welcome to Gladys Perrin and Mona Hayford. Thank you so much ladies for your support. I'd also like to thank all of my channel members for supporting me, and if you're interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. To get started today, I chose a rainbow of Gina K Designs inks. I will list the individual colors below, and I got out my blending brushes. I am going to be blending a rainbow on a piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth that I will later die cut with my heart die. This piece is actually going to get me two cards. I don't really do anything special when ink blending. I put a little color on my brush and then I just bring it to my Strathmore. I am blending this at a diagonal and once I put down the orange, I do bring back in my red brush and kind of blend between the two. I continue in the same way until I have filled all of the white space. You'll notice later that I do pull in a post-it note because I accidentally got some color on my fingers down into the bottom. Later it's covered up, you really can't see it, but the post-it note does help with that. I've also been asked about that little holder for my blending brushes. I will link a similar one on Amazon below. It's just a different color, I think. I actually got one from Amazon and I got a couple from Five Below. So if you have one of those close to you, check out their makeup department. Mm -hmm. 
After the ink blended piece was ready, I sent that through my die cutter with that hearts cover plate die. I'm just holding it in place with a little piece of scotch removable tape. Now I'm going to bring in something else that is low tack, a little scrap of press and seal. And I place this across the front of the card with the sticky side down, which you know it isn't super sticky, but it helps me to hold all those little pieces in place while I get my cards ready. For my first card, I want the outside edge of the die cut piece and all of the little inner pieces between the hearts to stick down flat to my card front. So I got out some art glitter glue and I just ran some small beads or small lines in the areas where I wanted that and then I placed it onto my top fold card base. You'll see at first that I was going to bring the piece of press and seal to the card base but it was too hard to see where it was going to go so I put that back upside down and I brought the card piece to the press and seal. Once that had dried for a little bit, I flipped it back over and I just used my finger to press down on the areas that had the glue on the back. I just wanted to make sure that was going to stay in place while I pulled back the press and seal. I will be hanging on to this to use here in just a second because I need to get my hearts placed onto the card front and again I want to use the press and seal to hold them in place while I'm adhering them. I did a little puzzle action here getting the hearts back in the die cut where they should go and then I placed that press and seal back over them. I want all of these hearts to be popped up off the card. So I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the quarter inch width, but it was still a little bit too wide for these hearts. So I cut a little piece that was probably about a half an inch long, and then I cut that in half. And I placed two strips on the back of each heart, and then I pulled all that release paper, which let me tell you, that was quite the chore. But once it was done, I flipped my press and seal back over, I carefully lined up where the outline of the hearts went by the die cut piece that was already on the card front and then I got that put in place. After I pulled back the press and seal I removed the frame piece from the card and you'll see here that nice dimension on each of the hearts. Because that frame is so fine, I brought in my Elmer's spray adhesive and I sprayed that off camera in a box so that I could place that onto a card base. Now my camera went fuzzy here so I pretty much cut that out, but I think you can get the gist. I just centered this right onto the front. For my sentiments, I stamped two sayings from the My Favorite Things Anything But Basic Encouragement. I chose I've been thinking about you in a non-weird kind of way and highest of high fives to you. I stamped this and heat emboss it on a black cardstock and I did get out a pretty big piece of black but that was in case I had to stamp it again. But luckily the first time the Versamark turned out well. I used my embossing buddy so I didn't have any stray bits so I heat set that and I was ready to trim it down to size. To cut these down, I brought in my little Fiskars photo trimmer and I used a couple different lines on that plastic guide to cut each of these out. I find this gets pretty good results without having a special die. Since I forgot to trim off the edges while I had my cutter out, I just eyeballed that and cut it with my little scissors. Then I brought in my ATG and added adhesive to the back of this first sentiment and I adhered this to the hearts. I didn't need foam tape because those hearts are already popped up. Now this was supposed to be the time when I added the second sentiment with foam adhesive to the second card, but something was not feeling right about this. It was just a little too simple. So I brought in my paper trimmer and I cut some off the top and bottom of that front panel so there were kind of even white borders on the top and bottom. Then I brought in a scrap of black cardstock. I cut it slightly wider than the four and a quarter inches, and then I cut it to three quarters of an inch tall. After adding a strip of adhesive to the top and bottom of the back of the white piece of cardstock, I placed each of those black strips so they peeked out just a little bit from the back. 
Then I trimmed off the excess and I really liked how this was going to define between my white piece and my card base later. Speaking of card bases, off camera I cut and folded this light blue one thinking that it went well with some of the blue on those die cut hearts. I added adhesive to the back and this got centered top to bottom on the card. Then to adhere my sentiment, I wanted to have a little bit of pop, so I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 8 inch width and I added a strip of that to the back. Then I placed this onto the card at pretty much the same height as the sentiment on the first card. And you know that I'm going to need a little bit of bling before I can call this card finished. I did have a subscriber notice the other day that I made some cards without bling. I think it was the latest sheet load and she felt kind of funny and honestly so did I. I usually do have to add that bling. I placed my glue dots where I wanted my sequins which I used some clear kind of holographic ones and then I put those in place with my jewel picker. And here's a look at the finished cards. For my next card I'm going to create a shaker and for my pattern paper I'm using the Bible Journaling Hot Buy Pad from Michaels. I wanted kind of a fun background and this was already made for me. I cut a piece that was four and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall to fill the card front. Once that was cut down I brought in my die cutter and I cut the heart from a scrap of black cardstock and out of the center of the pattern paper. Once again I held it in place with that piece of scotch removable tape while I ran it through the die cutter. I decided to keep the pattern paper die cut with some of those hearts because I thought I might want to use it on the card front. Off camera I cut a piece of clear card stock that is just a little under four and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall. I added some adhesive to the back of my pattern paper frame. I added both ATG and liquid glue just so I can get into those tight little spots so they adhere to the clear card stock. Once I had the glue in place, I then placed the clear card stock on the back and that is going to be the start of my shaker window. I want to inset the little delicate hearts so once again I sprayed that with that Elmer's glue off camera and then I placed that on the clear cardstock. This is the first time I've used that spray glue and I am loving it. I did decide to put some of the hearts back into the front of the card so I did a little puzzle piecing here and figured out which three I wanted on the card front and then I added liquid glue to the back of each one and then I set that aside to dry for probably about five minutes. While I work on that I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. I love getting to know a little bit more about you and sharing about myself as well. Today's question is once again from channel member Karen C and she would like to know, do you prefer top fold or side fold card bases? Let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV so that we know you've answered and would like us to see it. For myself, I make a lot more cards that are top fold and I prefer when the fold is on the four and a quarter inch edge, so a portrait top fold card base. I do make both, but that probably is my favorite. I can't wait to find out about yours. For the inside or the back of my shaker, I decided to use that same pattern paper. Originally, I was going to use white cardstock, but I thought that was a little bit too stark. So I cut down this scrap to just slightly under four and a quarter by five and a half. 
I pulled in some goodies from my Shaker Bits collection. I tried to pick a few sequins that would go with the pattern paper. And then I also brought in that little jar of gold. It's almost like really chunky glitter. To keep the goodies in my shaker window contained, I needed to make kind of like a shaker window well. So I brought in my foam tape in the 3 8 inch and the quarter inch wide, and I filled up the back of this piece as best as I could, making sure that the foam tape stayed hidden behind the pattern paper and the cardstock on the front. Once I had the back pretty well filled with foam tape, including behind where the pattern paper hearts were, I brought in a little container to make my sequin mix. I tossed in just a mixture of all of it. I did a few less sequins than I did of that really chunky gold stuff. Mixed it up to see what I thought. I did end up putting in a little more red, but once I had that done, I placed this in the center of the pattern paper. After those were in place, I pulled all of the release paper on the foam tape, which did take a few minutes, so I cut it out, and then I laid my shaker top over that background piece with all of those shaker bits. Once I knew it was nice and it sealed, I shook it up and started moving around those sequins and glitter. Since I was using that Bible journaling paper pad, I decided to go with a faith-based sentiment. I pulled out one of my favorite sets, Sweet and Sassy Stamps Be Encouraged set, and you will not believe it, but the sentiment I chose says, the best way to heal a broken heart is to give all the pieces to God. I thought this was perfect for the heart die cut that I'm using and for all of the little shaker bits or pieces inside that shaker window. To help tie in all of the gold shaker bits inside the window, I decided that I wanted to stamp and heat emboss my sentiment with gold embossing powder. Now when I shared my vellum cards the other day where I use vellum cardstock for the base, I had a few people mention about heat embossing on vellum and I know one person said that their vellum shriveled up. So I don't know that I've ever tried heat embossing on my vellum so I wanted to give it a go. Today I am using I believe it's 24 or 28 pound vellum so it is the medium weight that I own and I wanted to see if it would work without wrinkling. So I was very careful when I stamped my image not to move it in any way and the Misty is great for this because you know since this is a slick surface the stamps could move around easily on that. Before I stamped the dough, I did use my embossing buddy just so powder is only going to stick to the sentiment. And I have to say I got lucky. I only had to stamp this once and then the powder laid on there nicely. And then here's where I go to heat set it. One thing that I knew ahead of time is that I wanted the heat on that piece of vellum as little as possible. So I spent at least a minute off camera heating up my heat gun and then I brought it quickly to the back of the piece of vellum and then I really went right for it to melt the powder on the front. Normally I'll hold it back a little bit and wave it around but I did just direct heat as quickly as possible and while it wrinkled a little bit it definitely didn't like shrivel up or do anything too bad that I wouldn't be able to use it. Once again I brought in my little photo trimmer to cut this down but because it was a little too long for this I did cut about an inch and a quarter off each side before I used that plastic guide to get the even cut on the top and bottom. I left excess vellum on the left and right of the sentiment so that I could wrap this around that shaker element. I want to adhere this in place before it gets put on the card base. This way the vellum is hidden on the back of this piece instead of using something like glue dots and then having to strategically place sequins to hide it. Once the vellum was on there, I then added quite a bit of adhesive to the back of this piece just because it's so heavy, and then I placed it onto my card base. Now here you'll see I am actually using a side fold card base, which for me is a little unusual after I answered the QOTV earlier. 
I decided to decorate the inside a little bit by bringing in one of those pattern paper hearts that I had previously cut out. I just added a little glue to the back and then placed that in the lower right hand corner. Even though this card did already have quite a bit of sparkle, I decided to add some of that really chunky glitter to the front of the card. I placed some in the little tray and then this got cut off quite a few times so I gave up. You're only going to see a little bit, but I would place three teeny tiny dots of glue where I wanted those chunky glitter pieces to go and then I picked them up with my jewel picker and put them in place. I ended up doing two sets of three pieces of glitter and here's a look at the finished card. For my fourth and final card today, I'm going to make a mini slimline and use the heart cover plate die to emboss. I cut down this white piece of cardstock to six and a quarter inches wide by six and a half inches tall, and then I folded it in half. When I do a mini slimline, I like to make mine so they're six and a quarter inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall when folded. From the leftover, I cut a piece that was two and three quarters inches tall by five and three quarters inches wide. And then I brought in a scrap of black cardstock and this got to cut to three inches tall by six inches wide, just so there's a nice little mat on the piece of white. Now it's time to do the embossing. If you have a machine different than the Cuddlebug, you'll want to refer to your manual or some online instructions how to emboss a die instead of cut it. For me, I use that thick white plate, the two thin plastic plates, and then that rubber embossing pad. Now this is too wide for my die, so I'm actually going to do it in parts. I placed it down at the edge with that blue removable tape and then I ran it just part way through my die cutter. I didn't want to get a weird border or anything from the plates. Once I had the first one done, I then placed the die again onto the front of the cardstock. Originally I thought I could just place it beside it, but it didn't really line up too well. So I actually ended up putting my die back in the grooves of the column of hearts on the left. Now I want to make sure here that I really don't go all the way because it would put a weird impression in that center row of hearts. So I tried to pay attention where that ended and then I once again ran it part way through my cuddle bug and I have to say that I think I like the way that it turned out. For this card I decided to go with the hearts and do a love theme sentiment. I got out a vintage CC Designs red rubber stamp set that I actually have never used before and I cut out the sentiment that reads, I love you. I will be stamping that and heat embossing it with detail gold and once again since I had out scraps of vellum I will be stamping and embossing on that. I will eventually be cutting this sentiment out with a circle die cut, so that's why I put it toward the bottom of that piece of vellum. Now because this is a red rubber stamp, you might have noticed that I took the mouse pad out of my Misty, and I have to say that red rubber, even though you can't see through it and it is hard to line up, it stamps the best. Give this video a thumbs up if you agree with that. After I heat set that powder, it was time to do some die cutting, which since I have used my cuddle bug already in this video, I did off screen. Once all of the die cutting was done, I could then start assembling my card. I started by matting my emboss piece, and I noticed when I turned it back over that there was some black gunk on it. For now, I decided to just move on, just being careful, and I placed that matted piece on the center of the card front. 
I played around a little bit with the layout of all of my die cuts and when I thought I had something I liked I started adhering those down. The vine or the leaves got placed down with liquid glue. So did the gold hearts onto the vellum piece. Then to get my vellum piece onto the front of the card I used some glue dots placed behind the gold hearts and I brought back in my art glitter glue bottle and I very carefully put some thin lines behind some of the letters that I had stamped out. I tried to find more chunky areas where the glue might not run out. Because this does dry clear, it wasn't a big deal and I can't notice it at all. I decided that I needed one more of those aqua die cuts so I did that off screen and then I added it to the card front with some more liquid glue. I did have to kind of wiggle it underneath the vellum but I think that I like this coming out of both sides and kind of bleeding off the edge of the white. Now I did bring in my mono sand eraser and I was able to get rid of the black smudges that you could still see. And here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's four cards and maybe the next time that you look at one of your tools or products you'll think about all the different ways you can use it. If you did enjoy the video don't forget I always appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit Danny's blog post I have it linked in the description box below. Until my next video I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.